All right, so I'm glad you've stuck around um, because we're going to be making more awesome stuff. So if you haven't seen the last lecture, then um, go ahead and have a look at it because we show you how to set up with Carthage and also incorporate the IBM Blue Mix Visual Recognition V3 frameworks. But let's get going, let's make our app. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to unselect the landscape option. So because I want to lock the orientation of my app to portrait. And I'm also going to hide the status bar. Now, just clicking that hide status bar is not enough um, in order to get rid of that uh, status bar with the uh, battery life and signal strength, etc. You also have to go into the info.plist and where it says information property list, click the little add button. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, there's one called view controller base status bar. And you want to make sure that says no. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And then that's all done. And let's go into our main.storyboard to put on some designs onto our app. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need a top bar. So I need to embed my view controller inside a navigation controller with your view controller selected. So you can see this blue outline when I click on this yellow button, we're going to go over to the editor and where it says uh, embed in, we're going to choose navigation controller. So now we have our uh, first view controller embedded inside a navigation controller. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to drag on a bar button item. There we go. So I'm going to put that on the right corner and where you see this little shield symbol, that's the attribute inspector. And I'm going to change the system item to a camera. So I get a little free camera icon. Right. Okay. So now we've got a navigation controller. Um, so we get a free top bar on our app and we've also got a right uh, bar button item that is a camera. So the next thing I need is a image view. This is where the image uh, that I snap is going to be displayed. I'm going to drag that onto the screen and I'm going to set its constraints to zero, 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 zero. So as you can see, the constraints are active because these little red lines have become solid and you just want to uncheck that constraint margins uh, checkbox and we're going to add all four constraints. So now our image view covers the entire screen, which is exactly what we want. All right. Okay. So now we're ready to rock and we want to open up the assistant editor so we can drag on some of our outlets and actions. So one of the first things I want to drag on is this camera button and I'm going to give it an outlet called camera button. And I also want an outlet to this image view. So holding down control, dragging and dropping, I'm going to call it image view, hit enter. Um, and I also um, want to delete this part where it says override function did receive memory warning. So I also want to expose a IP action. So I'm going to hold down control, click on my camera button, and I'm going to drop an action down here. So I'm going to call it camera tapped. And I'm going to change the type from any to UI bar button item because that's exactly what it is. Hit connect and you've got yourself an IB action. All right, so that was pretty easy, right? We're going to head back to the view controller.swift and hit this button to go to full screen. So in order for us to be able to bring up the camera and also the uh, photo album picker, we're going to use something called UI picker view controller. So in order to incorporate that into this project, in your class declaration line, just after where it says UI view controller, we're going to add UI image picker controller delegate. There we go. And in order for that to work, um, you also need to add in a UI navigation controller delegate. There we go. So the two things you need to add are a UI image picker controller delegate and a UI navigation controller delegate. Now there's a lot of things in that drop down list that look really similar to both of these things. So just check to make sure that you've got the same thing incorporated. All right. So once that's done, then we are ready to add a instance of our UI image picker controller. So I'm just going to call it image picker. 
and it is going to be a object of UI image picker controller. Great. So that is created and inside our view did load, we're just going to get rid of that comment there. And instead I am going to set the image picker delegate property to self. So we've added our protocols, UI image picker controller delegate, UI navigation controller delegate. We've created a new UI image picker controller object here. And inside the curly braces of you did load, we are setting the image pickers delegate to self. Now, if you want to just build this app and follow along with me, then that's completely fine. It will work as long as you do everything that um, I do on screen. If you want to understand all of this, then head over and have a look at the full iOS tutorial, especially the Klima app, where we go into detail about delegates and protocols. So once you've done that, then we want to bring up that image picker once the camera button is tapped, right? So over here, we are going to set some properties on the image picker. So we're going to write image picker dot. And the first thing we want to set is the source type. So this is the type of picker interface to be displayed by the controller. And the three are camera, i.e. bring up the built-in camera and take a photo as the picker controller, or you can use the photo library, or you can use the saved photos album. So right now, because we're gonna have to test this on the simulator, I can't actually choose camera, because as you can imagine, the simulator does not have a camera because it lives inside your Mac. So instead, I'm going to choose the saved photos album. This is just the default photo album, which um, the simulator has access to. So hit that. Now, the next thing that we're going to set on the image picker is allows editing. So we don't actually want the user to edit the photo after they've taken it or after they've chosen it from the album. So for now, we're going to say allow editing equals false. And finally, I want to present that image picker view controller. So I'm going to write present um, view controller to present is the image picker and animated, let's say true, completion nil. I don't want anything to happen once it's completed doing that. So once the user has seen the image picker view, they're going to have to select one of them. And once they do, then we need to tap into the delegate method that uh, triggers once they've selected a image. And that delegate method is called did finish picking media with info. So as you can see, if you just start typing did finished, um, it suggests the one that you need. And the one that I've got highlighted is exactly what I need. So it tells the delegate, i.e. this current view controller, that the user picked a still image or a movie. So inside here is where we're going to be displaying the image that was picked inside our image view. So if you remember, we created an image view earlier on, it's currently completely empty, but this is the part where we want to show on screen the image that was picked. And this is also the part where we're gonna send the image that they picked to uh, IBM Bluemix in order to get it classified. So here we are going to write an if let statement um, to check if the if let image equals uh, info and it's the UI image, something called UI image picker controller original image. That was quite a mouthful. And it specifies the original uncropped image selected by the user, which is exactly what we want. And I'm going to write this as a UI image just to specify the type there and then I'm going to open and close my curly braces. If that is not true, i.e. if it was nil, then I want to have an else statement that just, uh, let's say, prints to the console that um, there was an error, there was an error picking the image. But if they did indeed pick an image and it is not nil, then we want to set the image view, image views image property to this image. 
And once we've pulled out the image that the user has selected and placed it inside the image view on screen, then we want to dismiss that image picker that we, pre that we presented earlier on. So we're going to write image picker dot dismiss and we'll say animated is true, completion is nil. All right, cool. So let's give it a spin and let's see if it worked. All right, so here's our app loaded up. As you can see right now, there is nothing on screen because our image view is empty. But if we hit this little uh, camera button, then it should bring up the image picker. But it is not because we have not asked the user for permission in order to tap into their photo album. So Apple doesn't want a situation where apps start stealing users' information without them knowing. So what we have to do is head over to the info.plist again, and we're going to add something. If you scroll down, there should be something under privacy called, um, called photo library usage. And while we're here, we might as well add the one that we need later on as well, which is uh, under privacy as well. And it is called camera usage description. So here you just want to put in a description that tells the user why you need their camera. Um, or in this case, I'm just going to say you need your camera, yo. And also same, we need your photos to check for hot dogs. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So once that's done, if you rerun the app, then it should work this time. Fingers crossed. Yay. So our UI image pick of you has uh, popped up and it's also showing our little prompt here. We need your photos to check for hot dogs. Okay. So hit okay to allow and you get sent into the uh, default photo library um, that the simulator comes with. So we're going to pick one of these images. And as you can see, it gets displayed on screen in our image view. Although um, you might notice that it l is looking pretty weirdly squished. So let's go and fix that. If you go over to main.storyboard and you've got the UI image view selected, you can see that the content mode at the moment is scaled to fill, which is making that entire image stretch so that it fills the space of the UI image view. Instead, what we're going to change it to is we're going to change it to aspect fill. So this way it keeps the aspect ratio of the image, but still fills the entire screen. Um, or you can go for aspect fit if you prefer that, um, but it's really up to you. Depends on how you want your app to look. All right, so in this lesson, we have implemented our UI image picker controller and we're able to select an image and put it onto the background. Now, if you go into the your, your view controller and if you change this to camera, and then plug in your physical device and then select that device over here and you can run it onto your phone. So once it loads up your app on your phone, you can check and hit the camera button. It's going to ask you for permission. We need your camera, yo. And you hit OK. Uh, this is a great game, by the way. Great games. It's currently propping up my laptop. That's how much I'm playing it. But um, you can already take a photo and hit use photo and you can see that it's displayed inside your image view. So in this lesson, we have enabled our very own image picker and we've also gotten it to work with the camera. So if you're having problems trying to run the app on your camera, it might be because you haven't gone through the instructions to sideload your app. Now there's quite a few steps involved, so I'm not going to go over it again, but just have a look at the lesson where we teach you how to sideload your app inside the main iOS track. So in the next lesson, we're going to be doing some image classification. And even though it sounds crazy, we're actually really close to the end of the project and we'll be able to get our app um, recognizing what our photos contain in the next lesson. So I will see you there.